Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Robinson. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Um, I work in Cedar Hill, Texas, which is just south of Dallas, Texas. And thank you for joining me today. I'm going to show you a little bit about what my day is like. Okay. All right, so I generally get here just around 8 a.m. Um, and I work four days a week, actually. So I get here around 8 a.m. on the days that I do work. Um, and one of the first things I do is I review um, my list of patients for the day. I like to see who's coming to see me today and what kind of fun we have in store, okay? Um, the other thing that I really like to do in the morning to get ahead of a lot of the stuff that needs to happen today is I like to review any lab or pathology reports that are available. Um, it's just really important as we do biopsies and get information to relay that to the patients and I have a great a really wonderful team of staff that really makes that possible um, on a timely you know in a tam timely fashion um, and so I'm going to review those today and then I will also review any messages from patients because those generally come in throughout the day and then sometimes the pharmacies like to get in touch with us as well if they're having any issues or questions about prescriptions or if people need refills so all of that needs to get done in addition to seeing patients so i'm going to go ahead and get started today okay so on a typical day, I generally see anywhere from 35 to 40 patients. Um, and that totally depends on personal preference. Some dermatologists see way more and some dermatologists see fewer than that. So, and that's one of the nice things about dermatology. You can make it whatever you want it to be. And so that is a very comfortable number for me and it allows me to take great care of my patients and still get home in time to take great care of my family. So my first patient generally is at 8.30, and so the morning clinic goes until noon, and then we take a lunch break from noon to one. I usually spend that lunch break charting. I really do have to get through my notes for the day in order to stay on top of everything that needs to happen today. Um, and then we proceed with the afternoon clinic, and usually I'm done by around four or 4.30 so that I can get home um, and enjoy the rest of my evening at home. So um, it's just about 8.30 now, so let's just go ahead and see the first few patients. Come on, let's go see some patients. One of the things I love most about dermatology is the wide variety. So on a given day, I can see people of all ages and I can see a wide variety of conditions that affect the skin, hair, and nails. It's a very procedural specialty and we perform a wide variety of of procedures as well and so we can do skin biopsies we can remove warts skin tags benign growths on the skin that people just don't like we also remove skin cancer so not only do I identify and diagnose skin cancers but I can also treat them in the office so that's a really nice thing to be able to offer patients as well all right so today so far I've seen patients with acne, I've seen patients with psoriasis and eczema, um, taking care of a few people with warts and moles and things like that that they don't like. Um, and another important thing that we do are consultations for hair loss and cosmetic procedures. So we've done a little bit of that as well already today, okay? The next room I'm heading into is a total body skin exam. And so periodically people will come in to have their skin examined. Um, that's actually a major part of what we do um, because as a dermatologist, one of the most important important things is to identify skin cancers and precancers. okay? So my patient's in the next room, patient's generally undressed, and we examine the skin from the head to the toe, okay? Um, if I identify something that's a precancer, we use this device to treat it, um, and so it can be treated in the office today to minimize the chances that it progresses into an actual skin cancer. And then if I do identify something that looks suspicious for a skin cancer, I'm able to perform a biopsy, and so that will be done in the office today as well where we take a sample of the skin and we send that to the lab to determine if there is a skin cancer or not okay so we're just gonna keep going okay and lastly we do a lot of cosmetic procedures and so we do things like Botox injections filler injections we can perform microneedling we also perform a procedure called platelet rich plasma which is a procedure that helps with hair growth and so we can do that all in the office in addition to chemical peels and things like that and I really love that part of my job because it really does impact people and can help improve their appearance and their outlook and so that's a really great thing that we're able to offer patients Hey. 
So I'm a board certified dermatologist and in order to become a board certified dermatologist, you need to complete four years of undergraduate or college, four years of medical school and four years of residency. And those four years of residency is one year of a general internship and then three years of dermatology specific training. Once you've completed all of that, you are then a board eligible dermatologist. And in order to become officially board certified, you need to then take the board exam and pass it. And that's administered by the American Board of Dermatology. And once you've done all of that, you're then a board certified dermatologist. You're essentially an expert in all things skin, hair, and nails. And that's what I get to do. And you know, that is just one aspect of dermatology. You can choose to sub specialize and a lot of people do so if you find that you have an interest in pediatrics you can do an additional year of training where you become a pediatric dermatologist and that means that you essentially see children and you specialize in taking care of children's skin okay some dermatologists really enjoy surgery and only want to do surgery or want to practice that is predominantly surgery and for those people in particular they can do an additional years of an additional year of training and that additional year of training helps them become a Mohs surgeon and that's a very specialized form of surgery that's done to remove skin cancers and growths on the skin Hey, I'm Dr. Robinson. It's good to see you. Too. What brings you in today? I just want to talk to you about my skin. I have some acne spots and okay. like some little dark spots and blemishes that bother me. Okay. They're not bad, but they just make me self-conscious. And okay. then some large pores. Great, I think we can help with that. Let me take a look. There are also people who specialize in cosmetic dermatology and dermatopathology. So those are also forms, you know, subspecialties within dermatology. So these people trained to become a dermatologist like I mentioned earlier, and then they spend an additional year focusing on these various aspects. So a dermatopathologist is a dermatologist who learns and focuses on looking at the skin under the microscope. And that's a really important part of how we make diagnoses and how we determine what's going on um, with skin, hair, and nail conditions and allows us to choose treatment based on the specific condition. Um, one of the things that we offer is called microneedling. It's essentially a procedure where we sort of make tiny little uh, micro trauma essentially tiny little like holes in your skin and it just encourages your body to build collagen um, so that we can get new collagen and help with the scarring help with the large pores that you're concerned about and it also helps with some any discoloration that you're concerned about as well okay, cool. um, it's a short procedure it's done in the office we will have you numb first because it can be a little bit uncomfortable but the numbing helps with that okay um, and so we'll do that today um, a lot of people see some improvement with it after the first visit but sometimes it re does require multiple visits okay so we'll go ahead and get started today okay I mean for me particularly the reason I chose derm was I really loved um, seeing patients that were healthy like rel you know most of our patients are relatively healthy and it's just really nice to see patients that just have something that they want you to help them improve and a lot of times we're really able to do that you ready? So this is just it's like it's just cold okay. it's like a cold cream I like being able to grow relationships over time as well and so that's another aspect when you can see a healthy teenager and really see them all throughout their teenage years as they're dealing with acne and then later on we see them in their 20s and 30s and then we see their kids and you know and so it really does allow for you to build multi-generational and long-lasting relationships and I really enjoy that as well um, and I also really enjoy being able to balance work and life and that was a very important aspect of how I chose my career um, I really wanted to have something where I could spend a lot of time at home as well and really be a great wife and a great mother and a great sister and a great daughter and so um, dermatology allows me to really have that balance where I can be a great dermatologist but I can also be a great person outside of dermatology. Um, and that, that's really another great aspect of the field. Okay, so this is just cold soap, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure the skin is completely clean. So my advice for medical students, if you think that you are interested in dermatology, is to first explore that interest. So you might see a lot about what a dermatologist is online, but I really do think it's important to get into a, dermatology, a dermatologist's office and really see what it is that we do every day. You wanna make sure that the career you're choosing is something that you're gonna be very happy with in the long term. So 
So what you can expect is you'll have some little kind of red areas. There might even be a little bit of bleeding um, from these spots, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when that resolves, you'll have a little bit of scabbing. We're gonna give you some cream to put on it and you really just wanna keep that on there at least twice a day. You don't want the skin to be dry and scabby. And so I think it's important to shadow a dermatologist. Um, I see some students who accept jobs as medical assistants with a dermatology practice. And that is really a great way to make money and also to see what it is to be a dermatologist before you go to med school or while you're in med school. Um, so I've had quite a few students do that with us. Um, and I think they found that experience really rewarding because you know, any redness and dark skin can turn into dark spots, right? Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is pigmentation that occurs after inflammation and redness means there's some sort of inflammation going on, okay? okay? So this is definitely your time to protect from the sun. Um, gentle soap and water to cleanse the area, and then I'm gonna give you a to-go little like tube to put on the area at least twice a day. You can do it more frequently if you need to, if you feel like it's like dry and scabby. Is this the whole face? Mm -hmm. okay. So the whole face, yes ma'am. Okay. And then um, sunscreen, yeah, sunscreen. Okay, awesome. That is it. I'll get you down from there. <laughs> and the last thing that I would recommend is to find a mentor. I think mentorship is crucial um, on the path to becoming a dermatologist. As I mentioned earlier, it can be a very long path and you know there are a lot of, of ups, obstacles and a lot of struggles along the way and I think it's really important to have someone to help guide you and help encourage you along the way. Um, I think those two things are really important, really experiencing the, the specialty and also developing a mentor within the specialty. Mm -hmm.